Right, so welcome to another episode of Irish Success Podcast. On the other side, we have Andrew. Andrew is a 20-year-old from Dublin who is already making over a hundred grand a year, <laughs> which is an interesting story. How are you, Andrew? I'm great. Hopefully, hopefully you're going to be able to tell us how you came to this position and you know how you're making it happen, because there's a lot of people listening and watching, and they want to know. Yeah, so obviously people kind of say it's a you know, I'm 20 and I'm already here. When I I started off probably 15. You started doing it at 15. 15. Can you can you tell us what do you do? So I'm a videographer. Um, I do a lot of stuff, but video is main the main thing. You know, there's photography and that, there's graphic design, mm -hmm. but it's film, film, film. I keep businesses going. I promote their pages. I don't do the promotion side. I make the content. For all these marketers you see, marketers need content. Yes. You know, you can't market if you have nothing to market. Yes. So I make the content for them to market. Um, I also, my biggest thing is funerals as well. I created the niche three years ago. It had never been done. And now it's probably one of the biggest things all over the world. 90,000 followers. We've had an average of 17 million views a week. So basically before when somebody was going to the funeral, they couldn't request a video. But now they can because you basically made it happen. Yeah, it And that's a, a good one. Yeah, because, you know, if somebody niche. close to me died, I'd want a video of that ceremony. Yeah, you know? when, when you see them, people, um, for, people forced to hear about the funerals. You know, it's, they're like, why would you film, film a funeral? You have to see the video and see what it is. It's a movie about this person. You know, we're telling an interview, the story. Say, for instance, Michael died. Yeah, and then I go and interview his friends. You know, I remember the time me and Michael, you know, we went down to this shop. Where we, yeah, we're great friends. What a heart it goes. So it's you know? more of a documentary it's kind a documentary. of view recording. It's, yeah. it's a film, you know what I mean? It's, it tells a story. It's not like what people think it's like, you know, the little webcam at the church that looks down no it's not it's a full documentary it's a, it's a film it's a short mm. film averaging from 20 to 30 minutes it, the average is 25 minutes all mm, the time mm. but um it showcases the whole funeral mm. uh, and it's been a great response great and so tell us how did you start in that business what well, because there's people who are watching this and we basically want to give people some directions if there's a person who is 16 years old and they say oh you like what this guy is doing i want some of that uh, would, you, would you give somebody some directions like you know direction where did you start basically yeah so like, people think i just came here and you know everything was handed to me it did not work like that i think i went the same route as most people did anyway like I wasn't that good in school. I had ADHD and, you know, I was always messing. Um, I I was always the one doing the jobs for teachers and whatever. So at 15, I got a GoPro. Um, my inspiration where it all started is Casey Neistat, very big YouTuber or whatever. You know, mm -hmm, he's a mm -hmm. filmmaker from uh, New York. I even had the electric skateboards. Oh, no way. Um, so whatever, I got a GoPro 15, started making YouTube videos on my quad. And from there, I grew up, uh, I, I kept going, and I got another camera. I, I was buying and selling stuff. I've always naturally, like, you know what I mean? Buying, I was buying Segway, selling them on adverts, just kept going and going and going. In TY, like, I Constantly was, upgrading your setup. Yeah, so, but now, yeah, always upgrading. That's the aim, is to always upgrade. But even in TY, for instance, like, you know what I mean? All my other friends are just going out, and I've never drank, never done alcohol, nothing whatsoever. I've always been just trying to better myself and be the best. And in, in TY, like, other friends are all doing this and that, and here's me buying and selling stuff, and then I'm hanging yeah. out with, like, Fabu D and stuff, and just, it was mad stuff, you know? But So where it all really started, where the business started, um, in Sydney Nights, which is an under-18s nightclub, so it's for kids. Um, I would have been 15, 16. I, could, I was going to nightclubs, and, you know, I'd compare myself to adults. Mm. So I'm in the nightclub, I'm like, I don't want to be in this position. I want to be in the working position. <laughs> you know, I want to be managing this or something. So <laughs> anyway, I started doing, I done like seven or eight, say, videos for free. You know, seven or eight different nights, and I was working there for free because I was just trying to get my way in mm -hmm. and build myself but up. That's and how that, you do it. That's where it started. Yeah. Now, that fella that started, I started out with Ross McKeown, gentleman, and Ian Melligan, the two of them are to thank. Um, I'm still with him. To, to this day you know I still work with them still do videos all the time with them but that's where it started and it just grew from there and I just kept upgrading and upgrading and upgrading and then yeah so you know I kept working you know it's all about talking to people I've never advertised work ever I've never said you know like I know businesses promote themselves even on Instagram I don't even post that much I'm just trying to I'm trying to post but what it is I'm just when I work for a business I try focus on them yeah. You know what I mean? I'm but all about promoting you, you, them. You dived in deeply into this and this is all you do and you do it good. That's why you don't need advertisement, you know? Yeah. It, the it, word of mouth. The word of mouth is so powerful. It's not what you know and it really is who you know. You know what I mean? So, yeah, I've just been focusing on empowering other businesses and I'm just doing all their work. Like, people would know I've ads on TV3 and all, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, mad stuff. Like So, it just went from there. I started out in car companies and 
So how does money. how does a twenty year old man from Dublin gets to work for high end celebrities without any marketing? You never market for, for for your stuff, you know how uh, you know. <laughs> so here here's the link. So from working in the nightclubs, then I met Dylan McKeown. Dylan McKeown owns Empire Events, a really big events company, and which is just soaring right now, unbelievable. He's just he's just a good gentleman. You know mm-hmm, what I mean? Like yourself, mm-hmm, he's just mm-hmm. easy to deal with, a mm-hmm, nice person, mm-hmm. and just whatever. So he's been empowering. He got the deal for the Black Forge. He does all the DJing there. And so Ross, who owns the under 18, Dylan is his brother. Mm-hmm. I met Dylan in the nightclub, whatever. We've said friends, I've worked with him over the years. He got me in. He always liked me, you know what I mean? He wanted to give me the chance as well. We all, we're you know, all on the same train. I support all my friends, you know. There's no point in getting people down. We're all on the same road. We all want to be successful. Dylan got me into the Black Forge. Listen, last minute shoot. They needed to do a cocktail. Will you do it? I said, yeah, no, but I done it really cheap. I got myself in there. Then they gave me a call back. said, listen, this Friday, a free Doug, he was the one that rang me. He's He markets loads of pubs all over Dublin. And he said, James Arthur is in. Now, James Arthur won the S Factor. He, he's, he's pretty big, like, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? Oh, I said, Jesus, that's an honour, you know what I mean? This is my first big celebrity I'm going to record. And they loved the video. Connor loved it. I was filming Connor. That was the first time I met Connor. Um, and yeah, I'd been filming him since then. Um, but before any of that, is mad because I was actually with friends with Tony McGregor, who was Connor's father. I was friends with him way before any of this. Not, not way before it happened, but. We had met, I was filming, um, you know, competitions, the raffling cars, yeah. and their business was they wanted to, they wanted to get Tony involved to raffle, to build, like it was a marketing technique, mm-hmm, let's mm-hmm. use Tony for this, because he was, he was quite big, over the coinage thing back then, and anyway, I got fr- talking to Tony, I was out in the yacht with him, and I hadn't talked to him since then, then he seen me out in another boat, and he'd seen me manoeuvre in a big yacht, and he's, oh. you know, he, he seen, he copped onto that, and then he, he asked, look what I, like to become crew of the boat and stuff and that's it I became crew and I'd been crew with him since but he wasn't my link to the Black Forge mm-hmm. Dylan McCallum he yeah. was the one who got me in yeah. there there you go I want to touch off this because people don't realise people think it's a you know marketing marketing but people want to work with people who they uh, get along with that's a big one isn't it because they wouldn't have got you if you were you know not nice to deal with let's say you know that's it you know I also believe in go Go f- beyond what people ask you. Mm. A lot of people say, oh, will you look, I, I need this poster made. I need this video. I'll make the video and I won't charge them for it. I'll say, yeah, look, it's grand. Do you know what I mean? Get me on the next one or whatever. Or I'll always throw in that extra little bit or I'll surprise them with like, you know, if I had loads of content, you know, during the week and I'm bored, I'll just, and I'm excited. I want to create something. Uh, the old saying was under promise and over deliver. But yeah. uh, Grant Cardone teaches it a little bit different. He says over promise and then over deliver. Makes yeah, sense. <laughs> well, Grant is he, he's he's good. I've watched a lot about him. Oh yeah, I know all his books by heart at this station. Not Jesus. once, not twice. I've listened to them like on repeat for years. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> well, anyway, the um, yeah. So that was it. I always kind of delivered, and people love that. You know what I mean? And then also not ripping people off. You know what I mean? I'm fair. How I work my business is like, for instance, a Saturday night, right? So this is like how my salary is split, or how my hundred k people wondering how do you just make a 100k out video 70% of that is funerals you know what I mean that's my full time job that's the business we run you know I'm, we are nothing but like I've never slacked on that job mm-hmm. since day one 10 out of 10 every time you know and that's why I'm respected with the wage because you know m- them videos have, have brought that business so far mm-hmm. you know and, and the owner will tell you that Mr. Garrett or He's the man behind the operation. He will tell you straight away. The videos is what well, that's who we are. People come to us. They say, "Oh, we want the video. We want the drone. You know, we want this." So that's seventy percent, and then thirty percent. But it, it's the thirty percent is grown is my self employment. Mm-hmm. That's the nightclubs and the thing. You know, so that's everything I invoice through. My and business. do you do any work for businesses? Let's say for gyms and car dealers. Everything. There's oh, nothing do I don't well. do. You're small, you're big. I, I will not turn anyone down, you know what I mean? I work with everyone, it doesn't matter who you are. Very good, very so. good. And do you do any work for, let's say, private people? Uh, as in, so... I don't know, some influencers, let's say. Yeah, I've done yeah, a few model shoots and influencers mm. and stuff. Um, you know, even just having them... You know, a girl, for instance, that wants to build confidence. I bring her to the studio, get all her full shoot done, and that would just be hers just to keep on her own. You know what I mean? 
when when and for instance when you're shooting them you got to be completely professional when i'm on funerals i'm on jobs my mind switches completely i'm just in a business mode and like professional yeah. even funerals nothing will upset me i'm just on the game and on the ball 24 mm. 7 do what you have to be do no emotion nothing and just obviously emotion you know what i mean you got to be professional about it but mm. it's it's about delivering 10 out of 10 for them mm, mm. how many hours a day do you work <laughs> Let's say because you know working on yourself, educating yourself, I also classify as work. You know. <laughs> well, that's what people people text me on Snapchat and saying, "Do you ever stop working?" I like I get that message a lot. <laughs> yeah, like I put up on Snapchat, like I put up a snap. I just say I'm never stopping. You know, I took I took a picture the other day of my camera. Like I work mental hours. Like I remember the busiest one of the busiest weeks there was only a few weeks ago for longitude. Mm. I had shoots like oh, it was mental. Like, I'd, be, I'd been in funerals all that week. I think I was shooting on the Thursday. The Friday, I had promo shoots in the day. I was just shooting a commercial. Then I had two nightclub, sh- or two or three nightclub shoots that night. Um, Excuse me. And then Saturday, I had a sh- I'd shoots again that day. I had a funeral Saturday, so I didn't finish till five or six. Mm. Then I had to jump in the car, go to Longitude, shoot an hour and a half set for a riff shop. Then leave there and then head back and do another shoot in town, all in one day, and then wake up the next morning at nine o'clock for a film shoot mm. on set. So I, I was actually up at eight, had to be at the house for nine, and then film all day till like six o'clock. You know mm. what I mean? And you're and I'm acting on that as well. You know what I mean? As yeah. a favour to someone. Yeah, I want pe- I want people to hear this and you know absorb that information because you know people usually when they work somewhere and they work let's say nine to five, so they work let's say eight or nine hours a day. They think they can stop that job and they can open their own business and they can still work eight hours a day. No, that doesn't work. Work, like that. Working for yourself is is a whole different ball game. But like in saying that, it, it it'd be easier because you love it. You know what I mean? When you love something, yeah. as as the famous saying, "Do a job you love, you never work a day in your life." That's exactly, that's I love exactly what it. I do. I yeah. love it because I meet so many different people. For instance, I've been with Dan Bazerlin. I've been with. Kev- exactly. Kevin, let's let's Kevin do that. So, who are the celebrities? Who are the celebrities you worked for? So, uh, Dan Bazerlin, um, Kevin Hart, your man. She's just I can't even remember half their names. So, um, what did you do for them? Was it video editing when they came to video? Yeah. So, a lot of the celebrities that we've had in was mainly through the Black Four. So, seeing them arriving and stuff. Um, I've shot for Tion Wayne. Shot him in Longitude. The Belters only lads. You know, they're from. They're local. They're going very big. I'm shooting for them again the 30th of October. They have a show here in Dublin. Um, yeah, and I just think it's going to start expanding now. So I was actually asked to go on tour with um, James Arthur across oh, America. No but unfortunately, I'm... Like, you, could, you couldn't leave the funeral business. Funerals, you know what I mean? I wouldn't leave my... You know, they've this been good to me. This is your bread and butter. My, it's the, exactly, it's the bread and butter. You can't leave your bread and butter. Definitely not. Um, I'd always advise people, you know, always have that backup plan. You always mm-hmm. have something there in case something fails. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, um, yeah, I've worked with so many celebrities. It's been fun. That's what I love about my job. Working with yourself, I can do what I want, mm. when I want. To. If I don't want to do a shoot, I don't have to go to work today. But, as I said, I've ADHD. You're in charge. That's what I, matters. I'm in charge, yeah. yeah. I People don't tell me what to do. Um, and I love that, you know, I'm 20 and I'm here so far. But, we, like, how I got here, when I was 17, like, you know, and I'm looking at other videographers that are 28, I'm still doing it to this day. I'm comparing myself to people that are way ahead of me and have had so much more time. Do you know why I think you're way ahead of everybody, especially everybody your age? It's because you don't drink. Yeah, a lot of people You don't drink that. and you don't spend 50 euro on weed every two days. No, no, no I've never went out in nightclubs. Oh, my brain is always just being business minded, you know what yeah. I'm saying? What's the next thing I can do? Or, you know, I've been always comparing myself to, that's what I'm saying, people that are 28 that have had loads of funding behind them and have these big cameras. I'm like, why don't I have this camera? I have the best camera in the game right now, you know what I mean? The A7S Mark III. And, you know, when I got that, I was like, right, I'm at the top now. Like, what more do I need? Mm. But... When I was 16, 17, I didn't have that camera. I'm comparing people with cinema cameras. I'm like, why don't I, excuse me, why don't I have that camera? Mm. You know what I mean? And yeah, so I've always just been comparing myself to other people. Yeah. I was thinking of a cool business idea and everybody who's listening and watching us now, you can actually jump on it. Well, I was thinking, and anybody can do it right now, just using their iPhone. And you can tell me if it's a good idea or not. Start a TikTok account 
and do car sales but don't sell your own cars what i would do and i was actually planning to do it but i just said fuck it i have too much on my head drive up to car dealerships and tell them listen i'm gonna record a short tiktok videos about each car and i'm gonna post it on tiktok account and if i get a sell i put the phone number to uh, i forward the number to you you answer the phone and if you sell that car i want some commission out of it and all day every day just drive from a dealership to dealership record videos and you will explode by the you know in no time i reckon do you reckon that would be a good idea for somebody who's young just go around and record videos tiktok is crazy now so i actually have a lot of saying this like where i started look main started it was car companies as well so when i started out when i was 16 17 i was videoing that and in the daytime like from leaving school i'd go straight into a garage car care and then i used to oh, so there. you did that yeah oh, so you did exactly so that. i done that for years <laughs> no way. Uh, years like i mean up till last year uh, this year actually I filmed cars I filmed promo videos for cars and I sold so many cars like that was my job you know what I mean it, and how I, like I remember I was getting paid 80 a car and I was doing 12 cars a day you know what I mean I was walking there you out go. Nine, anybody can do it right 900 now. Thousand euro like it, it's great being a videographer but like you know I have a friend right and he doesn't make half of what I make but I could say he's nearly better than me you know what I mean? He, he's a great, he's unbelievable at what he does. But his problem is he's just in the wrong business and he doesn't know how to market himself. He doesn't know, you know, he's great behind the camera, but what he, does he, he do? doesn't know the business side of it. Music videos, you know uh, what I mean? But there's yeah. no market, you know, no. the market there are the wrong people. There are yeah. people with... Also in Ireland, I think there's very little market for it. You know, in the UK, it'll be completely different. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. But in Ireland, you know, you have these cheapskates that are trying to rip you for every yeah. tenner. Oh, it gives a fiver off that, you know, and they only want to pay little, little money. You know, he needs to be in the commercial sector, yeah. businesses that 100%. can afford. He's just in the wrong sector. Yeah. That's the only reason he's yeah. not in big money. Yeah. You know, like we do some marketing videos as well for clients, you know, and, you know, we don't even reach to people who are making less than a million a year. Because how the hell is somebody going to pay me two and a half grand for a video if they're not making that in a day? Yeah. Two and a half grand is not a lot of money, you know, and it shouldn't be. That's why we don't do any, any stuff for people that make less than that because it doesn't make sense. But the great thing about TikTok these days is that anybody, even a 15 or 16 year old, can go out there and start doing those videos because TikTok has integrated uh, editing software and it's super easy to use. Yeah, as well. which I have used lately. I upload TikTok. That's what I as use. Well. I don't use any editing for my TikTok. No, that's it. That's all I have it's a, so I simple. Like, And now I'm, I'm starting to keep uploading now. Obviously, my TikTok is solely based on horses, you know what I mean? Because we have horses and people love to see them. It's stuff people don't get to get. I actually started uploading on YouTube a while ago. So is ago. that one of your hobbies? You ride horses? Hobbies are horses and jet skis and boats. I've seen the jet skis, all right. Jet ski, I'm <laughs> jet skiing mad. Like I've, I've Quick question, and, and it's not success related. How did you get to do, be on jet ski on a leafy? Can you just drive? Yeah, like so, a right, a lot of people ask me this. Um, you don't need a license for a jet ski, right? You don't need a license for a boat in Ireland. Anyone out there can go buy a jet ski or a boat, no problem, go launch it. But please read the rules, you know what I mean? Jets, like, when I comes to water, safety is number one. Yes. It always has been. I'm very strict <coughs> in safety. You know what I mean? you got to check your tide. You know what I mean? You can be going out on a low <coughs> tide. For instance, how you won't get out because there's a mud bank there. Um, and just look at your wind. It, it's very simple to understand it. And just look at it. Once you understand it, you, you'll have great days in jet ski. When it comes to the Liffey, the, how the Liffey works is that's a that's a yacht or a shipping lane so it's commercial shipping lane meaning you have to have a radio vhf radio if you don't have a vhf radio i think you're starting off stupid straight away you didn't look up you didn't look into jet skis um a radio is you know if your phone dies mm -hmm. and your ski breaks down you're not mm -hmm. going to call anyone yeah that simple radio you know you don't even need you need to know how to use it all you just need to have it is with you mm -hmm. because if you do come to emergency you just you're on channel 16 it will go to that automatically and you say listen i need help i'm here whatever and you know someone will be with you asap mm -hmm. anyone and they'll radio surround the boats i've i've performed many rescues on the 180 only done one the air show there a whole sail went off i i held my position until the coast guard got there and stuff but yeah we go, I go up the Liffey. I actually have a TikTok video. You'll see. And I have the radio. I say, uh, so VTS, which is, uh, I actually forget what VTS stands for. But we, we'd contact them saying, VTS, VTS, this is, you'd have a call sign, Yami 1, looking to go up the channel saying, South America, keeping a list and watching Channel 12, and uh, keeping a five knot speed limit. So you have a five knot speed limit. I told them I'm going to stay into the left of the wall. So that means I'm out of the channel and I'm still in the safe zone and I'm a five knot speed limit. Mm. And he said, yeah, no problem. Then he says, look, keep 
keep clear of all merging traffic so if a ship's coming out just hold your position let him go and do his thing just stay out of their way and you'll have no problem <coughs> and then go on straight on up the Liffey and that's it Riding so around generally the Liffey. speaking anybody can just uh, drive a, a, a jet ski in the Liffey realistically yeah um, you need like legally you need a VHF license to to operate one but you don't like you don't need it mm. but yeah don't just go up the Liffey and just rally you know some people just go flat you can't do that it, it, you know what I mean that's just breaking the law um, people have been arrested. People have been jailed for it. Oh, jail! Yeah. Ooh. Um. So, yeah. Okay. What are your other sources of income? Let's say because you have the video game. You know, do you have any other investments? Is there anything else going that um, you could recommend people? No, I haven't really. I haven't really invested in. You know, I was kind of going. You have plenty of time to do that. You're only twenty. <laughs> crypto. Yeah, I know. When I'm always like, oh, why am why haven't I invested in this? I'm giving out to myself again. Comparing myself to other people that are like thirty and, you know, like they're they're mining crypto i'm like why am i mining crypto you know what i mean like why am i doing this but um no i've I've a lot of assets you know mm. what i mean i keep buying like I'm, I'm a fucker for spending money yeah. i keep buying stuff but once you but buy like, something that keeps the value holds the value that they're all holding the value that's what i'm saying i've lots of assets and them assets are just holding value right now so i've like i've no problem uh, if i need i have a deposit for the house there so mm. you know what i mean that would be the next thing i mm. guess that's that's next on the list <laughs> probably one of not many 20 year olds who are buying a house <laughs> um, yeah well that's 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 the next game <laughs> there you go well done so Dan and the one thing at 20 I have a goal for people don't see that either oh with an M plate on it you know what I mean M plate on it on a goal for whoa you know I mean? <laughs> how so much did that set you back 30 grand wow. so and then the insurance was 3 grand so yeah because I don't know another hard part is getting yourself insured when you're under 20. yeah and then obviously I was telling you so I have a quad it's road legal I had to do the insurance. I had to do get three refusals. So if anyone can get insured in Ireland, there's a thing called um, insurance refusal. You go to the insurance Ireland or you go to the insurance ombudsman. You show them three refusals from three different companies and someone is obliged to insure you. Some people say, oh, I can't get insured in this. You can. There's just a different route to it. Yeah, yeah. I have. They a, have I, to insure I you. I have a friend who was banned for drunk driving off the road and yeah. then he wanted to get a van insured for this company, but they, in, they rejected them everywhere. And this is exactly what he did. He took three letters of the refusal and he went back and they have to insure them. It's the law, you, you, you know. They have to insure you one way or another, you know. You have to be insured. The quote was 10 grand, but they did insure him. <laughs> yeah, Jesus Christ, <laughs> 10 grand. Yeah. Yeah, but you can bring that back to insurance Ireland and say, well, like, you know, what's the reason behind this? You know, and they can say, right, that's unfair. Mm. And they can fix that. So I, I, I'll get a quote tomorrow for the quad. And if it's unfair, I'll say, Here, listen, look after me. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well done. So, okay, let's give some, maybe some tips, you know, so people who are watching this and they want to become this, maybe let's give some tips because people are usually, oh yeah, this video editing, get the camera, you know, but what about some solid first steps? If somebody wants to get into this, you know, I mean, maybe, maybe let's say something about the TikTok, maybe some sort of an idea where somebody could start today, right now, if somebody become, if somebody wants to become successful doing video editing, how would they start, let's say? so get some inspiration first you know what i mean it right now the easiest thing you want to use your phone go look at like instagram reels not tiktok ones instagram because instagram are where you're going to find the cinematic ones you yeah, know actual i noticed video. that yeah so if you like you can go out with your phone today and go into dublin city you could film a puddle upside down with your camera and get the reflection of the city you know you can just make these cool real cinematic videos you know, and that, that's a start straight away. Mm. Just follow YouTube and just learn how to create. Learn yeah. the basic steps on how to create. You can use your phone 100%. I have a 13 Pro Max and the camera's amazing on it. Yeah. And I could use that if I wanted. I actually filmed the funeral once on a, on a phone. Just this, a certain part of it because the gear is in the car. But, you know, it worked out and people didn't see the difference. Mm. So yeah. once, once somebody learns how to use the very basic tools that they can start getting work. L learn and the, the way, basics and, and the talk way, to people. Yeah, and talk to people. Make yourself present, basically, yes. So you could go to businesses and tell them, listen, I'll do it for free for you. Yeah, so that's that's basically how to start. You go to somebody and you, and you do the first couple for free and you learn. Get out, yeah. get out and talk. Go to um, even like, you know, you, you see people and they're doing these videos and like it looks savage and then they have a second video on showing you how to do it yeah, yeah. on TikTok like you yeah. know they put the glass and they throw paint at it or something yeah, and it yeah, creates yeah. Tricks, yeah. yeah so go to like for instance a coffee shop make a video the, you know the cup coming across the coffee um, and yeah just get out and do stuff and just start creating people always ask me oh like the employer or can I do can I work with you for a day but like 
I'm sorry, it's hard for me to bring someone with me to work because like I'm a one man army and I always have been, you know, I don't employ anyone. Um I just I just go into the game and I know what I'm doing and I go and get it. Yeah. And I I just go into a zone and I just keep working. I, I, I can feel your pain because if you got somebody to help you right now they would probably do standing beside you because and they wouldn't know they'd what to slow do. me down. Yeah, they'd slow you so. down. And I get that. I had that for a long, long time before I started hiring managers. I just wanted to do everything on my own, you know, and it worked it looks like that. Right, Andrew, could you recommend people how to start learning about your trade? Because you know, if you're a video video editor, you're a video guy basically, you need to know your stuff, you know? So h- how do you be, how do you get yourself to the point that you know what you're doing basically and you start charging people money? Um, it's just about well, obviously first look, you gotta have the right equipment. Mm. You know what I mean? Not not that you need to have the best equipment. You know what I mean? But you gotta have to start. You have to have something. Yeah, something there. Once you have that and you understand how to use that and you're confident, then I'd say go in, start getting the clients, making them happy. Um and an overreach and, and them small things to make it just look that more professional mm. I remember I bought like a mic like this and I done voiceovers I done them myself for these ads and they just look 10 times better you know them small things and just yeah it's all just about keep getting it's better it's all about continuous improvement and continuous learning you learn doesn't matter what day. business you're in especially in the video game because all the times there's new stuff coming up the algorithms are changing you 24/7. know yeah the used to be used to be you know the attention span of people used to be seven seconds now it's about two and a half to three seconds so you need to know how to grab people's attentions people's attention in the first couple of seconds get to the point yeah that's so like just it's keep learning crazy. you know and that's also another thing that our listeners should get used to is continuous learning it regardless if you work for yourself or not you know what is the big problem with working for somebody and still wanting to be seriously good at it and coming home and learning about your trade there's nothing wrong with that you know no there's not like same with me so like i work for someone realistically because the funerals you know i'm employed you're by... subcontracting basically That's yeah so doing. i'm employed by them and then i have my uh, myself employed business andrew yeah. heaney media but i over deliver for him mm-hmm. all the time you know what i mean he doesn't ask for it, but i will give him like these i i don't know poem a great example right to show what i'm talking about over delivering he had sent me a, a screenshot of a poem right a friend had wrote and he said look can you put it on a i'm obviously i can do graphics so he says can you put it on a better thing i said no problem and i sent him back a 40 second video and the video was basically all the like a show reel of all the funerals we'd done it just kind of well it's just showing off the horses but it was in 9 by 16 like instagram reel and i voice out i done the voiceover i read out the whole poem and i put music behind it and it was just beautiful cinematic and it went viral you know what i mean but he didn't ask for that he just asked me to send him back. I said, John, I'll do you one better. And I just sent him back that video and he couldn't believe it. And the girl who wrote it, um, she was she's like, thank you so much for bringing my poem to life. You know what I mean? Mm. I had a little writing on, you know, on a photo. Well, and there you go. now I've brought this to life and, you know, the whole world is kind of seen already. Mm. And it just, it, it was amazing for the page. So that's an instinct of kind of do something to make them happy. Because when they're happy, you know what I mean? They'll bring good things to you. I've brought great things to him and he's brought great things to me. <coughs> yeah. So, you know, and I'm this, grateful. This is also how you get recommended, you know, because if you were just doing everything at the basic bare minimum of what you're getting paid for, no. you will never, ever be recommended the no. way you would if you're doing it your no. way. And I know I know a lot about that. We do it in all of my businesses. We try to over deliver even something little, little small, you know. It doesn't hurt to be nice. Like, as I said, there's so much money out there in this world and people, like, people are afraid to go and chase it. There's money in everything. For instance, I'm going to give you an insight here. So I do a horse and carriage business as well. It's called the Carriage Co. We do, like, if you went out on a night out, you'd get into the back of my carriage. You'd spend an hour with me. Excuse me. Um, We have a big speaker on board. We have lights. And you'd sing and dance on the back of a horse carriage. Oh, no gone through town for an hour. And people, you know, they're kind of like, oh, do I want to do it? But after the same thing every time the most amazing thing ever like that is the best thing I've ever done like I've had texting like honestly I didn't think it would be that great you know what I mean like I want P- see it see it to believe you know what I mean mm-hmm. it's, it's one of them businesses but anyway that business like is so simple I pay rent a week on, on to take that horse and carriage for instance which is 150 you don't right? have to own the horse or the carriage no no you, you need to be like it's it's an inside thing so you want to be a, a, a carriage driver you need to be experienced for that but anyway I get myself out there like 
as as I make like that much money and I and I still am a videographer and I work for these celebrities, it doesn't matter. I will still go. I'm not ashamed to go out and drive a horse carriage and make whatever money. Garrett Brooks was on last weekend. I was going around the carriage singing my heart out, driving one horse and one rain and singing. Stop the world and let me off all these country songs to all these people and they loved it. <laughs> they absolutely loved it. Like in no two hours I turned over five hundred euro. Just simple, you know what I mean? But no you know what I mean? Way. That was fr- that was fun to me. I got paid to have fun. Four hundred and fifty euro for two hours and the night before I turned over six hundred euro. But like I was getting paid to sing, dance and have a fun time. Same with nightclub photography. You know, people can these easy things I charge for instance 150 just to go in take about half an hour yeah. simple invoice but there you go I want to touch off the topic when you when you said you on the horse carriage because that's a good business model because realistically you know people need to learn as well that you don't have to own the world like look you were able to make money off it without owning it right so you, you hired it you have the skill to ride it right yeah you can hire and cameras as well camera kit they oh, rent yeah. out equipment you know what i mean so like some people say like if you want to impress someone you know have the big cage have all the camera gear have the shoulder rig like I, i'm bare i'm a running gun that's what they like in the categories i'll be a running gun there's like cinema lads you know where they have all the kits and they have all this i want to keep it yeah i want to keep it as small as possible mm. so i'd be a running gun operator but if you want, if you're going to a big shoot, right, and I want to impress this client, I go into camera kit, like your student side, and I rent all these big lights and these mics, and I set them up, I sit down, and yeah, I'm going to have a great video, but they see all this, and they're like, right, savage, you know what I mean? That's if you want to impress people. If you don't have the right camera for that day, or you need a lens to get that better shot, you can rent it, simple. That yeah. that two rand lens will cost you 50 euro to rent for a day. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. You don't need to own it. A lot of people do do that, yeah. Because, you know, in this... In Great this business, business as well. Yeah. You know, it, it could be hard to... You know, it's a big purchase. Like, how much is a bit the, the camera that you use right now, the best camera? How much was that? Just the body was 4,700, I think, or 4,300, one of them. Oh, well, there you go. That's, you know... That's, that's just a, the that's body. That's a lot of profit. You know, you got to pay the lens for 1,100 quid, you know? And then you got to buy the gimbal, is 900, you know? the dr- camera? Yeah, that? and then the drone is, what, two and a half grand mm. in the Mavic 3. Mm. Um it's just expense after expense. Well, it's not expense after expense. You know, I mean, you buy that and you have them for so long. Like the camera, right, so I, the camera I had before that, the GH5, I ran that into the ground. That oh, was a really? workhorse. You know what I mean? It done what I needed, and it just that done funerals for two years, and it just, I mean, it's hanging to part. It it done its job. Mm. That camera that we're filming on a 5D right now, another great camera. They just don't stop. Mm. You know, it's a rough body. Mm. So, let's just maybe uh, do a little bit more of the help thing. You know, let's say there's somebody watching us now who has a camera, who has a drone, and he wants to start. Let's say, do we have any ideas of where they could go except the car dealers because we've covered that so far? You know, where could somebody go and start recording videos for somebody and say, listen, mister, I'll do this video for free. If it hits 10,000 views, you can pay me this much and this much. But you don't have to. The first 10 videos you'd make for someone it have to be free but where could people go to do that thing so they got to go to like-minded people so the car dealerships agree um cafes pubs restaurants well the cafes people. i wouldn't say because they're, they're not operating on high profits so they wouldn't have money to yeah pay somebody. yeah i know but, but it will get your starting off though yeah, so you know will get for starting off they're good places yeah um like i don't know a coffee shop that would say no to you like if you actually walk into a coffee shop and say hey could i spend 20 minutes in your shop to record a cool video about go it? ahead they'll always There's say so yes. that's it it's hard to really it's hard to market coffee you know what I mean? People don't look at Instagram and say, I'm going to go to the coffee shop. Yeah. It's the nearest one to you. It's simple as. Just open a coffee shop and make it look good. Yeah. You know, I remember someone saying to me, I don't need marketing because he was busy on the weekend. Oh, look at it. So, no, you need marketing. You <laughs> need to be busy during the week. <laughs> now that guy markets with me 24-7. The whole week is marketed. But he say, oh, it's grand. I don't need marketing. You know what I mean? Oh, it's grand the way it is. But his his staff it's a big huge pub now in Temple Bar right? but his staff are saying we need marketing we need marketing you know what I mean it could be busy now during the week but it's not mm. but now we do these cool social media videos like follow the venue every week and yeah business. does it bring results? oh yeah big time yeah. business is booming uh, Dylan McKeown Empire Events he supplied I put him in there and he supplies the DJs and since he's had good DJs now he had bad DJs before but the difference in the DJs is amazing oh, you really? know it's it's back to old times and 20 i can't remember the years now but 
years back, it was amazing. They used to do this big train. They'd run around the restaurant and get everyone involved, you know. Mm -hmm. They'd do YMCA up on the top and they brought that all back. Proper entertainment. Proper entertainment. Yeah, that's what people Saxophone and, you know, and it's just good buzz, good venue, great food, everything in one. And it's it's Mm. booming now, so it's great. Mm. Do you do much work for Connor or Gregor? Because you do some work for him. Connor, yeah, um, done the last video I videoed of him was when he came back to Dublin. I kind of just do the Dublin stuff. He was there for the awards, so he already has. He's a videographer that travels with him everywhere. Oh, so he has a full time guy. He's a full time, and he he's been like that since the very start. Mm-hmm. When he first started getting big, he got a videographer straight away, and mm. they've made they're actually making a full movie on him. The documentary. So oh, no way. all the footage I'd I, love to get him here one day. So when all the bigger. footage <laughs> I get of him, I deliver I send it to his producer and his producer sends it off to America and stuff and whatever. Um but yeah, I filmed him at the awards and then that video went on his Instagram. I don't mm-hmm. know if you've seen it, it was the one where the drone comes over the yacht mm-hmm. and then he arrives at the awards ceremony. So his videographer filmed all that and then when he got to the ceremony, half of it was mine, half was the videographer's, you know what I mean? Mm. But uh, I mainly do all the Black Forge stuff. So every video you see is mine in the Black Forge, oh. except for the very first video, the drone video. But everything else, all the celebrities, all that stuff is all mine. I also done the cocktail menu, we opened the cocktail menu, all the photos, that's all my stuff. Oh, no way. So, yeah. And could you tell us more about the captain thing? Because you, you are a captain for McGregor's dad, is that right? Yeah, so... um. I'm, I'm, my role is actually the navigator. How many jobs have you got? Come the na- on. The na- so I'm, I'm actually I'm the navigator. So I navigate the yacht, but but I drive it mainly. Um, it's it's split between us all. You know what I mean? Eugene, he's our first officer. He's an amazing, he's amazing at what he does. Um, they had a hard time, but the other day they brought it in with no um. I'm forgetting the word now. I forget the name, but anyway. Yeah. But yeah, so look, I. I drive the yacht. Mm. We all have fun. We're a yacht crew, so we all bring it out. Um, but just talks of a new yacht now. I can't talk on that much. I can't elaborate on it too yes, much. But yes. possibility there is something new on along the way. But it's <laughs> uh, something exciting. But so my role is yeah to navigate the yacht and drive it and plan routes, plan where we're going. Like if we go up to Hollyhead or we go across to Hollyhead, we go to France or wherever we're going. You know what I mean? Um. And then I also do some media for the yacht, so I, I build a website for I've seen that, yeah, nice we, website. We yeah. built the yacht. It's very simple, I need to upgrade it now, but um I've some videos <laughs> and I make videos of the boat and stuff and just keep people entertained. It's all about kinda I'm I'm always up for educating people. When it comes to horses, people ask me questions inside the road, I'll inform them everything what the horse is. Mm-hmm. You know, they ask, so What about this? How how old is I say, Yeah, well he's five and this and same with the the yacht, you know what I mean? I'm kind of so when I'm videoing, I'll let the lads hear the thing. I'll say, right, lads, so this is the starboard side, this is the port side. What we're gonna, what's gonna happen now is we're gonna turn out. He's gonna put the boat. And you post it on your TikTok, do you? Yeah, we post it on the TikTok, and then we post it on. Um, a second. Sorry, it was good on. Uh, there. So um, we post that on Tony's t- on Tony's Instagram. I have a video up on TikTok. But the, it's it's all about being informative because that's what the yacht people are looking at. You know, we're explaining them what's going on, what's going to happen, how we're bringing the boat in, what wind we have. So we have a 10 knot crosswind hitting our bow. So when we go out, it's going to drag us right. So we need to keep the bow thruster on to the right a bit. Just informative I tell stuff. you, that's interesting because even I'm going to tune into that because I'm looking to get a license myself. And that is sounds like a very informative video. Yeah, so it, that's it. Showing people the basics. And, you know, people think it, it is hard to drive a yacht, but it's not once you understand it and you're comfortable with it and you know what you you know what your actions do once you know what your actions do if i turn left which is to starboard or put that's port side sorry if i turn left to port side and pull reverse mm. the back of my boat will turn in mm. you know what i mean and then I, so, that there's a thing called a crabbing feature so if i put the bow thruster left and the engines to port side i can reverse and it will pull me, so here i'm here it'll pull me over to the dock you know all these kind of mm. easy things but well, they're not easy, but they. On uh, another topic, what are your plans for the future? Because you're you're twenty years old and you're already doing some quite amazing things. I, I'm wondering what are your plans for the future? What's what's in the line? Let's say, don't be you know, don't be sharing all of your stuff because it's no good the to plan, be sharing stuff. Yeah, just well, the plans is just to build a business and keep going, get more clients involved and start hiring, um, and yeah, start working with more innovative people and businesses connect and companies with, and connect, connect. With quality people as well. that's all yeah i've always believed in that you know what i mean um first i've always 
since a kid, I told myself I'm going to be a millionaire. Yeah, I keep telling Very myself. It's important to tell yourself. That tell as yourself, a kid. believe in you can achieve. Yeah. It's funny because every time I tell myself I'm going to get something, I get it. I tell my my dream was to have a jet ski. I had it. I got it at 16. Yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. And I was I was like, what the fuck? Do you, you do know? any goal setting techniques? Have you have you heard of yeah. any of them? Yeah, yeah. Well, my my technique is that. I aim something and I say, right, I'm getting that. That's the next goal. And do you write down? One, one objective. No, I keep in the head. I know and I keep looking at stuff. So the jet ski, then I was like, God, I got my first ever car was an Audi A4. You know, Black Edition was a nice car. I was working for car dealerships. It worked out great. Cause how, I old paid. You how old were you, were you back then? Yeah, I was 18. So I got an a Audi A4, two liter diesel, but the 180 brake edition, you know, was the fast one. I, I only paid six grand for that car. You know, but it was valued. It was up for eight, nine, something. I got it. I worked off the two grand in videos. You know oh, what I mean? Which no was great. Way, no so, way. you know, and the one thing I'll say to anyone who's getting into videography, you can trade anything for videos. It's unbelievable. You know, I want to get like anything. So, for instance, I don't know. I'm going out for dinner. I can say, here, do a video and I'll put it on, pay the dinner off. Anything, cars, I can trade, jet skis. Doesn't matter what it is, like businesses. You for instance, he wants to do my co say I want to do underbody done on the cars, I'll say, Yeah, do my underbody and I'll do you a video. You can trade video for everything. Trade, trade, trade. That's a good one. I didn't actually think you know that. what I mean. Well, that's a good asset. I, that's a good some, asset to have, but you see, you, Oh, it's amazing. Yeah. It's amazing. I've traded it for so many things, you know what I mean? I need this oh cheaper, I don't have cash or whatever. I'll just say, Yeah, I'll do a video for you. And that's it. That's the value to them, you know, and that is high value. Mm. so that's an amazing part is being able to trade video for anything mm. so c can you give us also a couple of takes on the way you set goals for yourself yeah so literally my goal is objectives so my objective first was jet ski then it was a car then it was get a better camera i remember like last year i told myself i actually told a friend i said bet you I, I drove a golf or from dublin to spain for someone and i said i want this car i was working in a car garage video the car that I have now it drove in I said oh, I want oh, that coincidence uh, yeah and I, and I drove it home the next day Um, you know what I mean and now my next goal was a quad so that'll be insured tomorrow that'll be that's another goal complete and then my next goal after this that I've set myself is a new jet ski mm. so that's after this but yeah I'm just I'm always I've always told myself since a kid be, I'll be a millionaire like believe and you can achieve and I've never you know, I've never believed in that so much more people need to get out there you just need to go out and do stuff and don't be afraid take the risk do do more do everything you know what I mean well done well done don't that's say, a great advice for no. young lads definitely not just maybe one other it. other piece of advice is you know if you really want to become, become successful you want to make the money that Andrew is making maybe cut out the alcohol maybe cut out the weed or at least limit it to you don't a need month it. a month don't need it I have ADHD and I am always the leader of the party yeah, I'm the look, one up singing it's dancing. hard to tell if all your friends do it because look I, I I've been mad myself when I was in my 20s even late 20s you know yeah. so it's hard to say that yeah. so it's hard to do it it's easy to say that's what i meant easy to say i've never been there i don't know what, 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 what i like. what i would suggest is give yourself one drinking weekend a month that's what i do now i drink once in six weeks now you know and the rest is the weekends are work yeah because you, you, you can't achieve anything great if you don't sweat over the weekends especially when you're young when you're young you should do it basically that's what that's what the bottom yeah. of the line is and obviously it? people are saying you want to travel and all and just um don't be afraid to go and do things. Do you know what I mean? If if Canada looks like an option for you, or Spain, or or where Australia, do you know what I mean? Don't be afraid. Don't wait on someone to come with you. Go and do it. Don't be afraid to do things on your own, especially. You know what I mean? I do everything on my own. I'll go here. I'll go there. Don't be if don't be afraid or embarrassed or like people always say. Uh, like I was going down. I'd be going like down Grafton Street on a horse and was like oh would you not be embarrassed no I've never been embarrassed of, I don't care what anyone thinks of me I never <laughs> have right. don't that's it One people, that's 100% don't care what people think of you yeah. do what you gotta do yeah. like you you're a TikTok so you don't what, care people's yeah. opinions they're jealous of you and people are always gonna be jealous of you but yeah. you know what I mean you're the one with the money in your bank they're the ones sitting at home on the keyboard typing comments about you you know what I mean yeah, so. yeah, yeah. what other people think about you it's none of your business that's probably what it is. Uh, okay, so thank you for coming, Andrew. And could you just tell our listeners and our audience where could they find you if they need video editing service? Where Where is the best place to get you? Andrew Heaney Media. H -E -E so well A E N E Y. Well done. Andrew Heaney Media. That's my Instagram. Well done. So, new website on the way, but Instagram is the easiest place to find me. Well done. Thank you for coming, Andrew. Well thank done. Thank you very much. Thank you. Boom.